Whitney podcast. This is going to be another not usual podcast episode because I have something very exciting to share with you. I am doing my first ever sponsored video. I have been sent a product that I am going to talk about in today's video. We're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. I'm going to use it to knit a project. And in the end, I will give my review of the product and show you my project that I will have finished by the end of this video. Now, I know I haven't done a normal podcast episode in quite a while, and I kind of want to touch on that a bit today. Um, I've been having a very busy few weeks at work, so I haven't been able to work on my normal projects. Um, I do have some sweaters that I've been working on. I know I said sweaters plural. I did pause one to start another one in order to try and finish it by a certain date and I still didn't meet that deadline. Um, it was a self-imposed deadline. It wasn't a test or anything. And it sort of made me think about my podcast and about my knitting. And I wanted to share those thoughts with you all today. Now, first, I do want to keep a little bit of my same... Uh, shtick, if you will, for this episode. So I'm starting with a mug of the episode. Appropriately, I'm using my Knitted by Whitney mug and I'm just having some water today. Cheers. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about expectations versus reality. Um, I started my podcast August of 2021, so last year, almost a year ago, not quite. And when I started my podcast, I had a clear idea of what I thought I wanted my podcast to be like, and that was providing pattern reviews, specifically pattern reviews for plus size knitters. And I do love that content, and I am still going to provide that content. But since I've started my channel, I've sort of branched out a bit, and I'm really liking how I'm branching out, and I kind of want to keep that into this YouTube channel as well. I'm talking, of course, about my very successful uh, top 50 free size inclusive patterns video, which that was the ticket that took me over the 1000 subscribers, which I was super thrilled about. And my channel is still continuing to grow, which is very exciting to me. Um, it's also something that I didn't quite expect, but I'm very excited about. And it sort of made me realize that I kind of like doing content like that as well as doing pattern reviews. The reason that I'm kind of branching out from the pattern reviews is that whether I like it or not, there is invisible pressure to get content out on YouTube. Now, I don't feel like you as my viewers are giving that pressure to me. I feel like I am putting that pressure on myself and sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's a good pressure, but sometimes it's an uncomfortable pressure. And I feel that it's only right for me to sort of reassess why I'm putting that pressure on myself and how that pressure is affecting me. So like I mentioned, I've had a busy few weeks at work and I haven't been able to knit as much. And I also just haven't had the mental clear space in my head to do some knitting. Um, so I haven't been working on my larger projects that I usually work on. Like I mentioned, I'm working on a sweater and I've kind of felt like if I don't finish it, I don't have content to provide. And I don't really like that my YouTube channel is making me feel that way. So I kind of like the idea of providing these sort of little bonus videos every once in a while that is not a pattern review or it's a pattern review of an accessory. I did touch on this in my episode about the school run headband, which I'll link below, where I kind of want to do shorter style videos or do smaller project review videos because accessories can be just as exciting to talk about as garments. I know uh, when I look at my performance, that video doesn't perform as well as my garment videos because some people aren't interested in accessory videos, which is absolutely fine. You are free to enjoy whatever kind of content you like. Um, but I find that it kind of takes a bit of the weight off of my shoulders to do something smaller and get a smaller video out. So that's kind of where I'm at with the channel right now. But I'm also at a point where 
I don't know if it's the season. I don't know if it's just what's been going on with work. Um, but my knitting mojo has just been all over the place. And um, I've, I've reached out to some of my other friends that are also podcasters who have also mentioned online that they're feeling a little wonky with their knitting mojo too. So maybe it's the time of year. Maybe it's the weather. I'm not sure. But for whatever reason, I'm not feeling like I want to work on large projects right now. I want something smaller or I just want a break from knitting entirely, which, you know, don't want to take a long break. I just mean I want to sit and watch a movie without knitting while watching that movie, um, which is strange for me because I usually like to knit the whole time because it gives my hands something to do so I'm not looking at my phone, but I'm finding that I'm entertained just by watching the show and I don't want to knit while watching the show. I want to pay attention to the show. So that's kind of made it feel like I have pressure to provide content even though I don't have something finished to show everybody. So that's where I've kind of come in with these other videos. And today I have a very special one for you. You may also have noticed that something else on my channel has changed. There's now ads with my videos. And that is because I'm now part of the YouTube Partner Program. And I do want to mention right now, I have absolutely no control over what kind of ads you're shown, how many ads you're shown. Unfortunately, I cannot control what YouTube chooses to show you, nor how much they choose to show you. Something else that's new that you would have seen on this video is that this is a sponsored video. I have been sent a product, which I can't wait to show you all, that I'm going to be using throughout this video and provide a review of at the end. So I thought I would start by doing a little bit of an unboxing. Now, I am going to be sharing with you the BenQ Genie e-reading lamp, which I have very kindly been gifted by BenQ. I'm not the first person of my collection of Instagram and YouTube friends to have been gift gifted one of these lamps. Um, I know Lucy of This Nanny Knits has been gifted one and Caroline of Caroline's Knits has also been gifted one. So I felt very comfortable accepting this sponsorship because those two knitters have raved about this light and they both really enjoy using it. So I felt that it was my turn to try it. And when Thank You reached out to me, I was very happy to accept. So let's do a little unboxing, shall we? Plug this bad boy in. Now that I've got it all set up, let's take a look at using the lamp. So I just need to press that little bar to turn it on. And then you rotate the knob to adjust brightness and press the knob to switch to color temperature adjustment. Okay, that's pretty easy. So if I press the knob, it's going to change my color temperature. Ah, there we go. And that's dimness or brightness. Put the sucker up all the way to the brightest. Now I would probably, there we go. That's nice warm light. Might be a little difficult to tell because it is daytime right now, but I am going to film some segments in the evening when it is darker and I do need some extra light. Um, there are two settings for this. There is book reading and screen reading. So the yellow is for book reading and the white is for screen reading. I don't do a lot of screen reading at home 
because I, I'm on a computer most of the day, so I'm kind of wanting a break from screens when I get home. So I'll probably use the more incandescent color for my knitting as well. But can I just say, this is a really pretty lamp. It is, you know, a certain style. So if you're not into this kind of a style, it probably will look a little out of place. Um, but I love the gold. That's beautiful. Lucy and Caroline didn't get the gold. Maybe the gold's new. I don't know. Sorry, Lucy. Sorry, Caroline. <laughs> you didn't get the gold. <laughs> this is a pretty easy lamp to work. It was very easy to put together. Oh, you can also put the cord along the back if you like to hide your cords. I'm not really concerned with hiding cords. Doyle likes to hide cords. I don't really care. I do admit that it usually looks nicer when cords are hidden, but um, they don't bother me as much as they bother him. So that's exciting. I'm very excited to try out this lamp and share with you my reviews of it. Now that I've got my lamp all put together and ready to go, I guess I should talk to you about what pattern I'm gonna be making with it. I've decided to make the bristle cone hat. Now this hat comes in six sizes from newborn up to large adult. And I love it because it has a double folded brim and then it has this really interesting texture detail along the crown. This is a free pattern. I got this off of Ravelry. If it has another link, I'll put that down below. Um, if not, I'll just provide the Ravelry link. I'm very excited to do this pattern because I have some very special yarn that I'm going to be using. I am going to be using some of Bumblebee Acres Eye of Sauron yarn from her Lord of the Rings collection. Now this yarn is absolutely stunning. Let me get closer to show it to you. This colorway is just fantastic. It goes from a really pale yellow all the way down to this not quite black, but really dark burgundy purple color, which I'm so excited to work with to see how this knits up. But I know because it's dark yarn, I'm gonna struggle a bit more than usual. So I'm very excited to be testing the Genie e-reading lamp while knitting this project to see if it helps me with the dark yarn which I'm very excited about. I've previously tried other tricks to give me extra light when working with dark yarn. I've worn a headlamp, which that's very uncomfortable after a while. I've even tried one of those neck lights um, from Amazon just to give me some extra light, but I found that I just couldn't direct it where I wanted the light. So I'm very excited to try this because as you can see, the lamp can come pretty much right over my lap, which is my knitting space, and it's not impeding my view in any way. So I'm very excited to see how this works out. But I am excited to make this hat. I'm gonna be knitting this pattern in a size that will work for both Doyle and I. We have the same size head, so it shouldn't be a problem. I usually wear his hats. He doesn't tend to wear mine because mine have pom-poms on them and he doesn't like pom-poms, so. When I finish this hat, I probably won't put a pom-pom on it because I know he'll want to wear it as well because we're both big Lord of the Rings fans and this is a Lord of the Rings colorway. So I guess now I better get started on that project and I'm going to be taking you along for the ride, showing you how I'm using my Genie e-reading light. And then at the end of the project, I'll give you obviously my pattern review that I normally do, but also a review of this product and give you an idea of what it's like, see if you might like it for yourself.
morning. We are having my absolute favorite weather. I love a good rainy day and we're having quite a rainy one today. I inserted a little clip just before this showing you the rain and I thought it would be another great opportunity to test out my BenQ e-reading light because in our house whenever it's rainy and really cloudy it's quite dark so we usually turn on all of our lights but I thought it'd be nice to just have my one new light for a bit of knitting and I am gonna test it out obviously I do still have daylight but it is quite gloomy right now but I don't find it very gloomy because I love the sound of the rain that's hands down my favorite sound in the world so um, I'm working away on my hat Unlike what I told you before, I am not doing the bristle cone hat. It ended up not working. Um, my yarn is just too thick. So I'm actually working on, the, the pattern is called Just a Hat, but it is a broken rib hat with a folded one by one rib cuff. And this is something that I do when I'm knitting on hats, especially ones that are double cuffed. It gets quite long once you do the cuff and I just find it's kind of awkward in my lap so to make it a little shorter I just fold it up like I'm going to when I finally wear the hat so it just makes it a little easier to sit in my lap I'm really enjoying this pattern um, it's really straightforward and I'm surprised at how easy it is to do the broken rib considering how cool looking it is um, I'm also really impressed with how well I can see the pattern considering this yarn is very variegated But I definitely want to make another one that is just plain solid yarn so that I can see the pattern much better But this is going to be a very warm hat. I tried it on last night just to sort of see where I'm at with the length and It's cozy <laughs> I'm really finding that my BenQ light is providing lots of light. Sorry about the cars going by. I do have the window open to have more rain sounds. Um, but I'm finding with my BenQ light that it's providing ample light with just the lowest setting. This is the lowest setting right now. If I was to turn it up, this is the highest setting of the light and i actually find that this is a little too much i don't need this much light i'm actually perfectly happy with the lowest setting because it's such a good quality light and it's really emitting a great amount of light in a large space considering the design so that's something that i'm really enjoying about this light is that it provides so much light with just this one bar and you know, comparable to other sort of like desk lamps or um, even just like a little table side lamp. It provides so much more light. So my fiance was having a video chat with one of his friends last night and his friend does minis that he paints and puts together. Um, he's working on a Star Wars set right now, which is actually pretty cool. And we were actually talking about how the BenQ light would be perfect for the work that he does because he does a lot of very tiny, very detailed work that you do need a lot of light for. So I'm beginning to see how this light is useful for a lot of different hobbies, um, not just knitting and not just reading, which is what the lamp is advertised for. It is called the Genie e-reading lamp um, because it's good for reading a book or reading an e-book. Um, but it would also be good for any sort of fine detail craft or hobby, such as painting minis, or um, I also sew. I could use it up in my sewing room. I actually still need to sew. I have a couple things that are waiting to be done. Um, and up in our loft, we actually don't get a lot of light except for late in the afternoon on very sunny days. So this is going to be perfect for sewing. Quilters would also really enjoy this light, especially because it provides such a large range of light. That's something that I really love about the light. It packs a punch considering how the size and shape of it. So you get really strong light. You get quite a large space of light 
And you also get the different like temperatures, which I tried out in um, the clips that I just showed you of using the Genie e-reading lamp at night. I found myself that I prefer the neutral setting the most, but if you like to have nice warm light, if that's more what you like for your eyes, it does have quite a warm setting for an incandescent style. And then it also does go very sort of like, I wanna say bluey white, which is good for using devices. So now that I've talked a little bit about the BenQ e-reading lamp, let me show you how my project is going. I'm really happy with how well the broken rib looks, even though I'm using really quite variegated yarn, but it's a really nice stitch pattern. And I guess now I should get back to knitting so I can finish up my hat and give you my final review of both the pattern and of the Genie e-reading lamp. Welcome to my sewing table. It's nothing fancy, it's just a plastic table with a cutting mat on it. Um, but I have my sewing machine, I have all my tools that I use, and now I have my BenQ light, which I am super excited because it gives me so much light. I will point out for sewing purposes, I have this set to the highest brightness, um, and that's because this room is actually really dark. Um, so I, and I don't have any other lights on right now, I'm only using my BenQ light just to get an idea of how well it works for sewing. And so far, all I've done is cut up my material, but I am going to get going on my little sewing project. And just in case you don't remember, this is the project bag that I said I was going to be making for the winner of my 1K giveaway from my previous episode. I haven't forgotten about it, um, but I'm going to get working on the project bag. And when I'm all done, I'm going to announce the winner. Is the little project bag that I sewed with the help of my BenQ Genie e-reading light. I have to say I absolutely loved this lamp for sewing because it provided so much light. It covered my whole sewing table and it was way better than the light sources that I have been using up in our loft. It's quite a dim area no matter what time of day it is so I'm really excited to have such a really great light up there for sewing. Obviously I'm gonna bring it downstairs and use it whenever I need it for knitting, but I think I'm gonna leave it up at my sewing table because I'm really excited to have such a great light source for sewing. And now it's time to draw the giveaway winner for this little project bag from my previous video, the 1K giveaway. And just a reminder, you're going to win this really cute little project bag. It's got cats and purple on the outside and this really pale, pretty pink on the inside, as well as the skein of yarn from We Love Knitting in the color Ice Goodye, as well as the little tiny stitch marker that says, all you knit is love. And without further ado, the winner of the 1K giveaway is... Lisa Porch. Congratulations, Lisa. You have won the Project Bag Yarn and Stitch Marker. 
In order to claim your prize, please send me an email to knittedbywhitney at gmail.com and send me your address and I will pop this off in the mail once I have that. Just a reminder, depending on where you live, it might take a while for this prize to get to you, but I hope you will love it when it gets to you. And for anyone who wants to make one of these little project bags themselves, I will include the tutorial down below. It is a free pattern and there's also a paid option if you want to make different sizes of the bags. This is the free size, just to give you an idea. I love this pattern as a beginner sewer because it's only straight lines and you can get it done in probably a maximum of an hour. I've made so many of these that I actually know the pattern so well now that I don't even have to look at it except to see what size I need to cut my fabric out of. So I love that it really becomes a great project to have in your back pocket for something you can make whenever you like. And they're really great to give as gifts to anyone you know who's into fiber arts. So knitters, crocheters, embroidery, that type of thing because you can give this as a gift bag and it will double as a project bag. So you can put whatever gift you have for someone inside and then they can use it in the future. So there was my experience using the Genie e-reading lamp for sewing. Ta-da! Here is my finished hat and I immediately need to take it off because it is a 26 Celsius degree day. And this is a pure wool hat and it is very hot. So there is my finished broken rib hat. And I will of course link the pattern below. Um, I did actually have to fudge my crown decreases a little bit. Bring that in a bit. Because I cast it on a different number of stitches than the pattern called for because I was worried because I was using much larger needles than the pattern recommended that my hat would be huge if I still did the same number of stitches so I cast it on fewer stitches um, and it worked out perfect like you can't really tell that I fudged the top of it um, I think it blends in quite nicely I absolutely love how gorgeous this variegated colorway looks I'm especially impressed that you can still see the broken rib pattern quite clearly despite all the colors of the yarn. Um, but I do want to make another one in a solid color yarn so you can really see the broken rib because it's so cool. Um, and it's a very classic style. Like I mentioned, I made this to fit both Doyle and I and it's a really great genderless pattern. Um, this would look great on anybody. And it's very comfortable. It's very warm. <laughs> uh, I will also include some photos of me wearing the hat because I got some great pictures out in our backyard. Um, I braved the mosquitoes and the black flies who are in full force right now to get pictures next to our shed because it was a great background for this hat. Just a note on the yarn. Um, if you do have sensitivities and you like really really soft yarn this might not be the yarn for you I do find it's quite stiff and it was a little drying to knit with um, it's gonna be great for cold winters because it's gonna keep me nice and toasty but I find that it's not quite as soft as other 100% um, superwash wool that I've used before it is a superwash wool um, and funny enough it's the only yarn I have ever bought that is measured in ounces instead of grams. Um, it is an American wool, so that might be why it's in ounces instead of grams. And it made me think, it's kind of funny that we measure our yarn in yards, but we often talk about it weight-wise as being grams which doesn't make any sense because yards are imperial and grams are metric. Just another funny way that we talk about yarn here in Canada at least. So it was kind of funny to have bought a yarn that's weighed in ounces for the first time. So I had to do some conversions when I recorded my amounts on Ravelry and everything. But either way, worked out great. So lastly, um, I am not going to be putting a pom-pom on this hat because like I mentioned, Doyle will want to wear this as well. He loves the colors. Um, and I noticed when I was taking my pictures that 
it looked great without a pom-pom, so I don't think I want to stick a nice big puffy pom-pom on top. Although, I have plenty of yarn left over if I did want to do a pom-pom. But I'm more into the faux fur pom-poms, so I think if I was to put one on here, I would probably do like a black faux fur pom-pom. But it's for Doyle and I, and he wouldn't like a pom-pom, so it's going to be just like this. Now that I've shown you how I use the BenQ Genie e-reading lamp in my hobbies, let me give you my final review of the product. I hands down recommend this lamp. It is such a useful tool to have for your craft hobbies. Like I showed you, I used it for both knitting and sewing, and I use it in different ways for each hobby. So there's a lot of versatility with this lamp, and I think it's a really great tool to have if you do any sort of hobby that involves meticulousness or needing to see a lot of fine details in your work. My favorite thing about the lamp is that it provides you such a wide space of light. That's something that I haven't gotten from other light tools that I've used for my hobbies. For example, the headlamp or the neck light. So having something that provides a lot of light but doesn't take up a lot of space is a really useful tool to have. Like I showed you when I was sewing, it just sat on the corner of the table, but it illuminated my whole sewing table and that was really helpful. So I'm looking forward to using this a lot more for sewing and a bit more for knitting too. We're moving into the summer months right now, so we have quite a lot of daylight right now until pretty late in the evening. So I probably won't be using it for knitting for a while, but come winter time when it gets dark around 4.30, I'm gonna be breaking this out a lot and I'll be using that for some extra light while I'm knitting. Thank you so much to BenQ for gifting me the Genie e-reading lamp. It was such a joy to get to try out this product. Like I mentioned before, other knitters that I know have also done a review of the BenQ light, so I felt very confident taking on this sponsorship, and I'm very excited to get to have this beautiful lamp in my craft arsenal. And now for some book reviews. I did a little poll on my Instagram recently um, because I've been reading a lot of books lately and I wanted to know how many books people would be comfortable with me reviewing per podcast episode because since my last podcast episode I think I've read maybe five or six books and uh, most people were divided between one to two books or all the books and I think I'm going to go with the safer option which is talking about one to two books. Because I don't want to just sit here and talk about book after book after book. This is a knitting podcast, not a book podcast. So I have two books to share with you. I've got both of them from the library. The first one, I'll talk about this one first. Even though I read this one more recently, I read This Is Going to Hurt, which is a memoir of an NHS, National Health Service, junior doctor over in the UK. So this is by Adam Kay, he's the author, and it's sort of his story of the time when he was a doctor. He has since stopped being a doctor and is now a comedian, which is why this has been recommended as a comedy. It is a comedy. There are some very funny moments, but it was also kind of a downer because it's really sad to see how much work goes into being a doctor, how much your life is taken over by your job. Obviously, it's the type of job that you need to have a calling to do it because you're not in it for the money. You're not in it for the time off. You're in it because that's your calling. And he did tell some really interesting stories. And it made me think of Hive Knits, who is another knitting podcaster. She's also a knitwear designer and a full time doctor. And it just made me think she is a superwoman for having the time and energy and brain power to be a knitwear designer as well as being a full time doctor. So, oh my gosh, huge props to Hive Knits because Lizzie is a superwoman. Back to the book. Um, I found the stories were really interesting. I just found that. I can get squeamish and there were some bits that I found a little, a little, uh, not exactly safe for a full stomach. <laughs> so take that however you would like. But 
I will say it's a very quick read. It is extremely large print compared to usual for me. This is not a large print book. That's just what it is. Um, but it was a very quick read. I think I read this in a day or two. Um, very interesting to read about what it's like working in a hospital, all the crazy things that you see, um, all the ways that it takes over your life. And by the end of the book, I found myself cheering the author on for leaving his job as a doctor to pursue something that made him happier. Because as much as he loved being a doctor, he worked in um, obstetrics and gynecology. So he really loved how rewarding his job was, bringing babies into the world and helping women and that kind of thing. I do applaud him for realizing that that wasn't his true passion and he needed to find other work. And he got to write about it, so, and I got to read about it. So it was very interesting in that way. So that was my first book review. Now, my second book review is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I'm gonna preface my review of this by saying there is a trigger warning for um, sexual assault. So if that is something that bothers you, by all means, skip ahead, end my video if you need to. Um, this is a psychological read. It is about a girl who, when she's 15, has a sexual relationship with her 40-something-year-old teacher. And then 15 years later, her teacher gets accused of sexual assault and she has to process what happened to her versus the defamation of her, prof of her teacher. So it's a very interesting read, if you don't mind, that content. Um, I understand that's definitely not for everybody. I just found it extremely interesting to be in her mind and to see her. It goes back and forth between when she's 15 and she starts her relationship versus her in the present. And it kind of shows how that relationship affected her entire life throughout her years because the moments in the past start getting closer and closer to the present moments. And it's really interesting to see how even when her relationship with the teacher is over, he still has psychological power over her. And it's really interesting, interesting to see her really look through the lens of what's happening in the present to see how her relationship with her teacher was abnormal, was wrong, was a power dynamic where she was not the one in power. And it was really, really interesting to read that and to see how her relationship with him affected all of her future relationships with everybody she's ever met, both romantic and friends or family or just people that she meets on the street type thing. So if you don't mind content like that and you really want a thought-provoking read, I highly recommend this book. I was thinking about this book for days after I read it and I went through it pretty quickly because it was just one of those page turner type books you wanted to find out does she see it as a wrong relationship yet does she understand what happened to her how did she get involved with him in the first place like it was just one of those books that you needed to know the answers to those, those questions and the book delivered it was just phenomenal very well written excellent excellent storytelling so that's another one that i highly recommend thank you so much for joining me for this slightly different podcast episode i hope you enjoyed my review of the ben q genie e-reading lamp i'm very excited about this product to use it with some of my future knitting projects and to integrate it into my regular daily life i think it's going to be really handy and it's so pretty i'm really excited about the gold I'm also very excited for any future sponsorship opportunities that might come up. Um, I'll wait and see what happens there. And if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And there's nothing else to say except everyone take care. Bye.